This topic will be a little bit about prices and cost in the National Survey of Early Care and Education. So cost and price are two related but distinct concepts. Cost is uh, the term that we use to describe uh, actual costs incurred by households for their regular early care and education. Price, on the other hand, is, the, um, is a provider side concept about what they charge parents. Um, the actual costs incurred by households may be different from the prices charged by providers um, because of subsidies, discounts, um, or other arrangements. And the NSEC, uh, when we talk about cost, we're talking about the cost of non-parental care to households, so their out-of-pocket costs. Uh, we've collected those data um, for each child provider pair, which is something that we call the arrangement. <clears throat> so if there are three children uh, going to the same center-based provider, we would collect the cost for each of those three children um, to go to care separately. Because the most commonly uh, reported uh, unit of time was weekly cost. We, in turn, have prepared the data also as a weekly cost to care um, for households. Um, it is possible uh, for an arrangement to have a cost of zero dollars to the household. That could happen, for example, if grandmother is the one who is caring for free for her grandchildren, um, there, that would involve zero out-of-pocket costs on the part of the household. It could also happen if um, a child is in a Head Start program that doesn't have a parent pay component. Price uh, is again the provider side concept. Uh, we collected price of care very similarly for center-based and large home-based providers although we do have price of care for all home-based providers. Um, for prices, we asked um, providers to report for um, individual age categories. What is the maximum price that you charge for full-time enrollment of two-year-olds or of four-year-olds? Uh, again, we allowed providers to report in the unit of time that was most accessible to them. We know that that tends to yield the highest quality data. Um, and so across those prices, we found that hourly rates were most commonly reported. So we have converted all of the reported prices to hourly rates of care. Again, there is such a thing as a zero dollar um, price. In that case, that means that the provider does not charge any parents for care at a certain age level. So none of the four-year-olds um, have parents paying for their care at the provider. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, these concepts of cost and price can be quite challenging for respondents to report. And so following the best practices within survey methodology, we allowed respondents to report as in a flexible manner that was easiest for them cognitively. So they would report their own choice of time unit and rate. So I might ask, what is the price that you charge? And the answer could be, oh, parents pay $6,000 a year, or we charge $40 a day. Um, respondents generally are familiar with their own price schedules, and so that would be an easy piece of information for them to give them, for them to give us, while you can imagine that it would be much harder for people to instantly compute an hourly rate, if that's what we were asking for. Um, the sim a similar structure was used in the cost, where again, not only did we allow parents to report in whatever time unit um, was convenient for them, but we also allowed them to report, for example, a few arrangements together. So I previously said that we would collect prices, uh, sorry, costs 
separately for three children in the same household attending the same provider. And we did, in fact, collect separate uh, costs for all three of those children. But we allowed the parent to report one and then adapt from there. Is that the same amount that you pay for the other children in the household? Um, is that a grouped amount covering all three children? Something like that. In terms of price, uh, center-based and large uh, home-based providers were asked to report the highest rate without subsidy currently charged to families for full-time enrollment. So that there are many, many different terms in there. Um, the one over thing to observe is that this language is very similar to the language that are used in market rate surveys which are one of the primary vehicles for collecting price information about child care. Um, it's a maximum rate charged without subsidy meaning that it's almost like a retail price. There may be further adjustments that a provider makes, maybe there's a multiple child discount, maybe um, a lot of uh, parents also receive um, a discount because they're part of an affiliated institution. There may be um, subsidy dollars, a variety of things, but this is the maximum price that the uh, provider charges. The point about full-time enrollment is that prices are sometimes higher for part-time enrollment. If you're going to come 50 hours a week, I may charge you one rate but if you only want one day a week, then that daily rate may actually be a little bit higher. You still get a cubby. We still have to do paperwork for your child, all of those kinds of things. So the daily rate is sometimes higher for part-time enrollment. We asked for the full-time enrollment rate. But otherwise, the full-time is not material to the price. Um, the, it, it's just a way of... Um, making sure that we're not getting a special uh, price that may not apply to most of the children in the center. Um, for small home-based providers, um, the question is quite different. Um, what we have found in developmental work is that small home-based providers, say people who are caring for one or two children, generally don't have a price schedule. They may have negotiated some terms with the individual parents that whom they are uh, helping. And so in that case, we collected the actual charges. Um, so those might incorporate subsidies, discounts, add-ons, various things. So in this sense, the small home-based provider prices are a little bit more similar to what we're collecting on the household side from parents. They're the actual uh, uh, funds that are getting transferred between parents and providers. So in terms of the ages for which data are available, uh, in the center-based data, we have prices reported for infants less than 12 months, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and school-age children. There are a couple of ages missing there. Um, large home-based providers, those who were asked the same questions about maximum prices without subsidies, they um, were asked Again, for infants and two-year-olds, not for three-year-olds, but then four-year-olds and school-aged children. As I mentioned, small home-based providers reported the price for each child that they served. Um, the cost data, now we're switching back to the household side. Um, the cost data were the direct out-of-pocket charges um, that would include uh, copay amounts, um, it would be offset by subsidies paid directly to the household. So um, if there's a reimbursement or if there's cash um, that is directly coming to the household, what we were trying to capture in the cost information is the uh, net out-of-pocket uh, costs to providers, uh, to parents. Um, what you we'll find in our data files are a variety of variables. We have uh, costs, weekly costs for each arrangement, and that is really the core uh, information. We have then aggregated that information to uh, create a household level 
weekly cost for all regular care arrangements. Um, so that's a summary variable that can be found in other data sets as well. Um, but in our case, it's built up from uh, summing together all of the individual arrangements they reported rather than directly asking what is your total weekly cost for regular um, early care and education. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the cost may be zero because somebody else is paying for care. This seems very alarming um, <clears throat> until we recognize, for example, that public school is a great example of care, not early care and education, but education that is um, at, provided at zero cost to parents, although it is obviously not um, free um, to society. Um, there were a number of arrangements um, that had to be, uh, had to have cost data imputed um, because of um, some uh, patterns of how respondents answered earlier questions. Um, these were generally imputed in the center-based EC and other organizational EC categories, which you can learn more about um, consulting the NSEC documentation on type of care. Um, another issue to just keep in mind uh, is that um, there were cases where uh, parents were not able to disaggregate uh, the separate amounts that they were paying for different children, in which case we uh, ass made assumptions about the allocation of those dollars. Um, and in, it is theoretically possible and occasionally occurs in our data that a cost can be negative if the subsidies that come in exceed the out-of-pocket payments. Um, that's an infrequent occurrence in the data. All of these things, the imputation, the allocation across children, negative costs, all of them are regular, re readily uh, visible in the data, and a couple of them have even flags that will help you identify the instances within the data. So there it is. We have price and cost for um, early care and education in the NSEC. I think the biggest thing to keep in mind here is that how data were collected from respondents is not always how it's most easily uh, analyzed on your part. And so you'll be looking for variables in the data that have been prepared for analysis. If you wish, you could go back to the raw data and reconstruct in different ways, but we've tried to collect data in ways that are most suitable for respondents and deliver data and share it with researchers in ways that are best suited for research. Okay, thank you.